Kala Paris. I love you all. We miss you. I miss you. Yeah. So good to catch up with you so all it's, backstage. It's been a while. So, I mean, we see you wandering the stage, Inspector. Just wandering. Just space, wandering right? around. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> what are you up to, aside from what we're going to talk about? Yeah, you know what? Um, when I kind of stepped away from anchoring weekends and from The View about mm -hmm. two years ago, I knew I just had to pump the brakes a little bit and slow down. So mm -hmm. I've been working Monday through Friday. Um, I file most days for Good Morning America. Nice. And I have a faith podcast, which I'm super passionate really about. Well. And yeah. I am present with my husband and kids on the weekend. Oh, so more ministry so, time for you. A lot more ministry time. <laughs> a lot more, of course. And Joy. what's this? I hear you got a tattoo. I did. Where is it? I, I didn't really know what I was getting what does myself it say? in for. It be says still. be still. And, and still. Uh, with a little cross, yes. Biblical. So it's just, oh, it's biblical? It is biblical. They used to tell that to me in school all the time. Okay, then you should get a tattoo. <laughs> she I went to Catholic school. You. That should explain it. Yeah. yeah. Be still. I, I got it in Charleston with my girlfriends. We get together every year, and one of my other girlfriends was on board to get it as well, and I get mine. She's like, yeah, I'm not going to anymore. So yeah. anyway, I wanted, to, I wanted a reminder to just be still. It's obviously the verse. It's biblical. Be still and know that I am God. But just to be still, be present, be in the moment, and just just to calm the heck down. But my so. phone tells me that every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> time to stand up, time to take a breather, but you, is time your phone, to be still. Is your phone glinting you? on this thing? What? I, I wanted this so that the tattoo artist actually told me, he said, you know, it's upside down. And I said, no, this is a reminder for me. Yeah. I don't care if anybody else sees it. Yeah. But hey, it, it does give me a little edge, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at Very that. Edge. I love but that. I mean, it, means it hurts. Different, yeah. but, it hurts. but it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful bi biblical verse because it just means that God is in control and we yeah. are not and, and just, the control to, just to be still mm -hmm. and know that he will take care of all exactly so it's, nice little reminder yeah. it's very profound it's nice yeah. it's nice um, well people uh, may not know that when you left this show a few years ago you were really going through a tough year mm -hmm. personally uh, and professionally that led you to make those drastic changes right in your life so share with us what happened yeah so it was um, it all started in um, the fall of 2017 and I had a series of I guess unfortunate events as you might uh, call them but within seven months I had a miscarriage with an emergency <coughs> surgery um, I had a concussion through a freak accident at work mm -hmm. a kid threw an apple at my head the day I get cleared to go <coughs> oh, back yeah. to work I get in a head-on car crash then I get influenza which turns into pneumonia mm. and I had oh felt God. like God kind of calling me to, to step back and to pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. And it was in that season that I said, okay, I'm listening. Yeah. So that really led to walking away from really, was, in essence, you know, at the no, height of my career, two dream jobs, yeah. but I knew that I needed to slow down because I was losing sight of what was important, losing yeah. sight of the relationships that are important Somebody to me. hit you in the head with an app during they, a live Yeah, I remember that. Live, right, live, before, live. right before I went live, so it yeah. never made air, but yeah. they threw the apple about 60 miles an hour. Wow. It, they said if my head was turned just slightly to the right, it would have yeah. fractured the side of my face. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That so, pretty face. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes. But I knew God was trying to get my attention. And so you have that. also spoken <laughs> candidly and openly about your miscarriage, yes. as have I. Mm -hmm. um, and you actually, I want to thank you. You were an incredible source of support. And I think, it, for me, it's still scary to talk about because mm -hmm. there's so much stigma, so much judgment, at least I have found. And I actually almost regretted talking about it afterwards. Uh -huh. So then having someone like you who has been so open about it, yep. I understand it was important for you to share your experience with your daughter. Can you tell me yeah, why? Yeah, I actually, so I talked about the miscarriage in 2017. Mm -hmm. I had another one in July mm -hmm. of this yeah. past year over, over the 4th of July. I'm 44. I always wanted four kids. Maybe it's because I'm the youngest of four. Um, but that was my third miscarriage. I've had three healthy pregnancies and three viable pregnancies. And I knew what was going on. We were on vacation in Maryland with some friends. I knew the signs, and um, I brought my daughter into the restroom with me, showed her what was going on, and I said, I just want to let you know, um, mommy is, the baby is probably no longer viable. Um, mommy doesn't feel any guilt. This is normal. It happens to so many women. It's happened yeah. to me a couple of other times. When you get pregnant, it might happen to you, honey, and I want you to know there's nothing you did wrong. Yeah. And um, it's so I just, important. it's important to grieve, but it's also important to know that this happens to so many of mm -hmm. us. How old is your daughter? Um, she's 12. Mm -hmm. She's a perfect child, by the way, and then I have my boys. We're savages. <laughs> <laughs> We're savages. God has a sense of humor, so. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's important, and we've talked about that. Yes. Um, uh, on your podcast, 
this, which is doing so well, Thank and it's you. so good. It's Thank so you. good. Um, this season, you interview politicians, presidential mm -hmm. candidates, about their spirituality, which is something that they don't always talk about, right. um, and how it influences their policies. Sure. And your guests run f uh, the gamut. Senator uh, Cory Booker, Ted Cruz, um, both of them opened up to you about their love, in a way, for Trump. Yes. Which was fascinating to yes. me. What well, did they tell you? Well, Trump has obviously said some inflammatory things about both of them. Yeah. Um, and that's Cruz, why I... Cory Booker has made the audacious claim, I love Donald Trump. He's able to say that because of his faith. As for Ted Cruz, you guys know the 2016 um, campaign trail was, was heated. Was there brutal. was a war, yes, he, he offended him and he said his inflammatory father. things about his father and his, his wife. wife. Yeah. And he said, it's because of my faith calls me to forgive people. Okay. My faith has called me to forgive uh, Donald Trump and to bury the hatchet. He says, of course, there are things I wish he says and uh, things that he does I wish he wouldn't, but he says my faith calls Did me you to ask Ted on. Cruz uh, how he reconciles his faith with some of the policies of Trump, like separating children from their parents? Yes, and he has and stood up to And living at the border he by themselves? He does not agree with that policy. Um, what has he done about and it? And he has said, he has spoken up. And really? said that he doesn't agree with it. And again, he says, I'm an ally, but there are things that he says and does that I do uh -huh. not agree with. Yeah, right. So. Okay. So. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, it is so good to be back. <laughs> well, you have a seat if you ever have a, oh, a you're minute sweet. to come and hang. Uh, to see uh, thanks to yeah. Paula Ferris. So you can Thank listen you. to her podcast, Journeys of Faith with Paula Ferris, for free on your favorite podcast platform.